not a video game, it's the Canadian brass hamming it up on their horns. Their trademark has always been to play music well enough to make them world famous, but with a few laughs thrown in. They've been recording an album in Toronto recently, and Tina chatted with two members of the group. But first, here is a taste of brass. This year, the Canadian Brass is celebrating 25 years together. Their antics have earned them the title of the Marx Brothers of Music and brought them guest spots on Sesame Street and Entertainment Tonight. They've recorded 41 albums, been to Carnegie Hall dozens of times, and were the first Western chamber music group to tour China. Now there's a changing of the musical guard at the Brass. For the first time in 10 years, a new member is playing along. He's trumpeter Jens Lindemann from Edmonton. I am pleased to be here with Chuck Dallenbach, one of the original founders, and the new guy, Jens Lindemann. Hello, you two. Hi. You know, Chuck, I, I, it's, it's so nice to meet you. I can't believe you guys have been around for 25 years. Well, we were, uh, we were just toddlers when we started. <laughs> but what yeah. did you set out to do? I mean, when you, when you originally came together, the five of you? And... Well, 1970 was our starting year, and the idea was to take instruments that we all played and music that we loved and see if we could create an opportunity for ourselves, really, to make a living playing instruments on a regular basis. So that uh, set the challenge, and the challenge was to, uh, to play to an audience and hopefully have them enjoy that performance to the point where they might want to see us and hear us again. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, quite a pressure on a performer, and a good pressure, a very positive kind of pressure, and, and we uh, responded to it, apparently, uh, in the right way. And uh, now we have a very strong and faithful audience that's made it possible for us to, uh, in fact, be here 25, 26 years later. But when you started out, this was very avant-garde. I mean, you were there with classical music, and, and not only were you talking to the, uh, to the audience, but you were treating classical music like it wasn't, you know, a piece of Rosenthal china. Well, we were definitely the uh, topic of conversation at many, uh, at many cocktail parties in New York about how uh, what Canadian Brass was doing was perhaps uh, pushing the industry in, a, in an odd and unusual manner. And we do feel responsible for a whole different uh, concept about presentation. I think audiences like to have a, a, a strong connection with performers. And now performers have to take that into account. And uh, either we were simply responding to something that was in the air anyway, or we've helped create something different. But uh, our, our presentation was unique, and uh, now people are, are responding to it very positively. You know, we were laughing of Chuck talking about being a toddler, but Jens, you were a toddler. You were four years old when these guys were starting up. So how did you uh, manage to get together with this troupe? Well, uh, it's true. I, I've been listening to them for a long time. They hate it when I mention this. Yes, I know. Too. My <laughs> mother was a fan of theirs, you can say. Yes. But uh, I, I grew up listening to the brass, and I can't think of anybody in my generation and then some that, that wasn't influenced by the Canadian brass and what they were doing. So as a young musician starting out, uh, it was a tremendous influence on me and many of my of my colleagues. So you, you bought into that right away, that kind of interaction with the audience, that kind of stuff that you, this, you grew up with that then, yeah. this wasn't a change for you? No, no, it wasn't a change. It seemed normal to want to communicate to an audience, particularly as a trumpet player. It's not an instrument that's often thought of as being a soloistic instrument like the, the violin uh, or the piano. Brass instrumentalists are always thought of as being a little quirky. When in fact, uh, we, you know, what we want to do is communicate uh, as, as musicians and the, the tradition of the Canadian brass certainly set a standard for us coming up. So no, it feels completely normal. Does it? Yes. Well, we use the term well. normal advisedly when we're talking <laughs> okay. about the Canadian brass. But what kind of audition did they put you through then? I spent four days with them in Baltimore, <clears throat> and we did a lot of playing together, and we hung out a lot. As you can imagine, a group that's together this much really has to get along individually, and we all do. I mean, it's one of the beautiful things about the group. They're just as much fun off stage as they are on stage. It's, it's really a great time. Did we get the right guy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who programmed yeah. this guy, right? <laughs> but now, I understand it had something to do with an, a very appropriate Carmen imitation and a wig. What's going on here? Yeah, I, I like wearing wigs. I always did. No, no. <laughs> No, I have no problem wearing the wig for Carmen. If it makes an audience feel great, which all Canadian brass concerts do, then I'll wear the wig. So, Chuck, are you guys actors? Because I'm assuming you're doing these things without words. You're not singing Carmen, are you? We try to give appropriate performance. To having. In fact, when we talk about presentation, the fact is we never tamper with a proper piece of music. 
when we play Bach, it's, it's absolutely inappropriate, pin drop quiet a kind of performance the Bach. The fact that we introduce it, maybe in a way that makes it more interesting or illuminates things, is, is the style difference. Well, when we got to ballet and opera, this presented a challenge because we felt the music shouldn't be played just alone, that it was written for something more. So we took it on ourselves to, uh, to actually get involved more in the visual aspect. And um, we invited friends of ours. See, we'd worked in the pits for, well, collectively. In the orchestra pits. <laughs> yeah, 50 years <laughs> in pits. So we had a lot of experience with stage production. We'd never actually seen any of these productions. Sitting under the stage, we could always hear feet moving around. <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> we didn't know exactly what they were doing, but it gave us a clue that something was going on. Right. So during intermission and after the program, we would talk to the performers and say, well, what are you doing when you're, when you're out there? And uh, they gave us some really good information about what actually goes on. And from these conversations, we were able to recreate the original staging. So for Carmen, for example, we have, a, a, it's, it's Canadian opera production, really, what we're doing. I mean, maybe it lacks, it's, the performers are the best ones we could afford, and we have to double up, but... Uh, it's and, and do you play Carmen? Uh, yeah, I'm one of the doublers. I have several <laughs> it's only because you're young, you know. Yeah, I mean, right. as they're making you play all the girl parts, aren't they? <laughs> young and foolish. <laughs> That's right, the heaving bosoms. They'll all be coming your way. But, you know, I'm interested in what you said about your instruments, too, because brass instruments are very sexy instruments, I'm here to tell you. Oh, nice. What made you choose your instrument, Jens? I mean, what made you choose yours? Well, for me, it was the irony. I actually wanted to be a drummer. And uh, in, our, in our junior high band program, you had to pick the uh, trumpet or the clarinet in order to be a drummer and I failed miserably in my trumpet exam so I couldn't be a drummer and my parents wouldn't let me quit man you know so I ended up being stuck on the trumpet and uh, grew to love it yeah. fairly shortly thereafter. What about you Ted? Well mine's a little a sadder story in fact in my case everybody wanted to play flute or trumpet and they lined a table they, they had a table out in front of us we were in sixth grade and they sort of blew a whistle and you could run to the table and pick your instrument and the fastest people, of course, got flutes and trumpets. Well, by the time I got there, you can imagine what was left. So uh, there I am playing tuba. And it's, uh, but lucky, if I didn't play tuba, uh, we've already, now we've got two trumpets and a horn and a trombone. There wouldn't have been a place for me in the group. You wouldn't so, have been there to begin with. Right now, right. I can see your other band members are, are coming in, moving mm -hmm. in behind us. That's what all this commotion is about. So let me ask you about what you're doing here. Okay. You're making a recording, right, we're of Leonard recording. Bernstein? Yes, we're, we record with uh, BMG Records. and. Um, uh, we're doing a recording of Leonard Bernstein music, principally from the, uh, the famous show, of course, West Side Story, but also a few pieces from The Mass and uh, Candide. And uh, some of it gets quite large. Today is actually a day where we've invited uh, five colleagues of ours from the Toronto Symphony to uh, fill out even uh, a stronger, a larger brass section. And then some of the top names in... Uh, well, as you know, Toronto, of course, has top names in, in world uh, jazz and commercial playing. So we have also a rhythm section playing with us that's absolutely world class. So uh, you'll witness just a few moments of uh, quite, quite, a, quite an extravaganza here. Now, is this why you look so young? Because you've got the best <laughs> job in the world? Uh, I could be. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll check out Jens in a few years. We'll see what it was. Yeah, yeah, so we're we're going we're gonna to come close and count your yeah. wrinkles. And then we're going to come back in five years and see how many more you've got. Well, Part of the job is actually that you get a plastic surgeon in the contract. It's, it's great. Yeah. With a blonde wig. It's so handy, I know. Well, listen, I want to wish you a, a, a happy 25th great. anniversary. Thank and you. I think your music is wonderful. It's been a delight to meet you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Christina. Well, it wouldn't be right to make you wait, would it? Here's a taste of that recording session, the Canadian Brass and Friends playing Leonard Bernstein. When we come back, how much...